Welcome to Rick's Corner, brought to you by Old School Labs, the brand I trust and the only one I put my name to. Use my code, Drayson12, on the link below. Welcome to Rick's Corner. The man, the man, the legend, now on with the show. Welcome to Rick's Corner. I'm back on the air after all this time off through the COVID virus, and it's been tough to get guests, and as you know, I've been running old shows, because there's some real good ones a lot of you haven't seen. You've seen them, I'm sorry, but they're really good to watch all over again. I have a guest today named Joseph Ariana. He's a personal trainer. I'm sorry, I'm out of breath. We just moved in here. And he has been helping me a lot in the gym um, when I couldn't go, when I couldn't really do anything. I'm still on a walker and I'm limping, so he picked me up and took me to the gym and helped me with the workout and brought me back, gave me to lunch. So I wanted to say that for a personal trainer, he goes way beyond the call of duty. He, uh, it's not counting reps. He knows what I can do. He knows what I know, but he was assisting me in the gym, grabbing the weights and doing things I needed to do to try to get some health back. And it's worked out really wonderful. So I thought I'd have him on the show because he's a good guy and there's not a lot of trainers like that. Most trainers today, all they do is count reps and take your money and it's just nothing like that at all. What is your feeling? Well, I've been around gyms a long time. You've been around too. About trainers today. Do you have a few good ones at your gym? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Thankfully, uh, thank you for having me, Rick. I appreciate you taking the time and, and oh, you know, it's yeah. an honor and pleasure to be on here. Um, I work with a bunch of great guys at the gym, uh, particularly Eric the Trainer. Uh, you might have heard of him, uh, if people haven't checked him out, check him out on his Instagram or Facebook. Uh, but I got a bunch of co-workers there too, about five, six guys, and um, we just want to make it where people feel comfortable to come in and, and, and exercise. Because when you come into the gym, it's not about the ego and the machismo, it's about becoming better, right. just taking it one step at a time and helping each other out. Well, first of all, Eric's gym is like top notch. It's got everything in the world there. It's got two different gyms, indoor and outdoor, and a ring in the middle. Yeah, I love that place. Yeah, this place is great. And the trainers, it's, it's not crowded. The trainer, each trainer has a client, and then you work out. So for me, with him, it worked out okay. He knew what I could handle and what I couldn't. And, and being down with, uh, I had a kidney issue and my leg issue, I had to really take it kind of slow. But uh, Eric, the trainer, knows a lot, and he hires good people. Now, how long have you been training people? Uh, I've been a personal trainer going on... Seven years now, I want to say, yeah, seven, eight years. Uh, I started focusing more that as a profession once I got out the Navy, because I used to be in the Navy, and that's really where mm -hmm. my personal training career kind of started off without me even realizing it. That's where I was really? helping some of my coworkers and some of my, my shipmates and stuff lose weight, because you have to be within certain standards to be in the service, of course. and so of course. some people weren't quite there. So it just inadvertently happened. They always see me working out. They always see me eating, and they come and ask me, "Hey, what are you eating?" Or, "Hey, how oh, you've you got good food in the service." Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, the best. <laughs> you the best food ever. And so, so that's how it kind of started happening. And then I ended up coming across Eric at the gym where we used to be called Powerhouse, over here in Burbank. Oh, that's and, right. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. And you know, one thing led to another, and I ended up joining Eric's team. And I haven't been happier. <laughs> it's a good team. Now, I have questions because you know that I'm really old school. Yes. And for me, old school is the way to train. Uh, yes. It's the best. It's the best. Some of these new exercises and they have you do with certain things are good for people that are newcomers that don't know what to do, you know, with the ball and all that kind of stuff. But um, if you really want to get a body and you really want a muscular body, then old school is the best. I, I completely agree with you as well. Uh, to me, that era, just as well, besides being muscular and big and, and standing out, they had a, an appeal to it. it. It was aesthetically pleasing to the eye, Right. where it, it was put on with thought. You didn't just go in and work out and do these movements and stuff. There was, it was thought out what you were going to do, how you were going to put right. it on to get a certain look. Well, you had, to, you, had to, you had to take each body part and then develop it with work, uh, with, with uh, what I want to say, with exercises that work for you. Yes. Because what works for you may not work for me. Correct. And I always got by with seven reps. I don't know why seven. <laughs> I guess it's my lucky number seven. <laughs> but I made my best gains on seven reps, five sets, four sets maybe, and once in a while. Um, when I started doing the high reps, which a lot of people do nowadays, it did nothing for me. Mm -hmm. Made my muscles shrink. That's correct. I feel as well, and again, it's sort of I feel where you're wanting to take your body to. Yeah. You know, if you're trying to build the mass, you're not going to gain that mass size without having to push your muscles with a heavy weight. They right. need to be physically challenged, and you're not going to be able to do heavy weight 
for 20 reps. No, but they work against resistance. Yes. Anytime you resist your muscle, the muscle has to meet the demand, and so it breaks up cells, and, and they d duplicate, and then they grow. Mm -hmm. um, you can get a good pump, and you can put uh, demands on the muscle with a lot of reps, but maybe that's not the answer. I think it's overworking the muscle. I think it tires the muscle out. You know what I mean? The heavier weight seems to build more mass. Now, not everybody wants mass. People just want to be in shape nowadays and lean, which I totally agree with. Uh, my age now, and I'll be 76 next week, I'm staying much leaner than I was when, years ago when I was competing. And people say, well, you're not as big as you used to be. Well, why would I be? Yeah. I don't have enough proof. Exactly. I already did my, my thing. I don't know who I am and what I got, but I like being lighter. And I'm pretty much eating everything nowadays, as you saw with the burger at lunch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just Burned feel like out. I need the calories. So um, that's working for me. Now, you have different people with different needs that come in there. Yes. How do you, uh, how do you uh, meet their needs? How do you know what they need? Well, I start, I have a range of, of people from, I have young teenage people to people who are older. And I kind of always start with a simple getting to know their habits, kind of get into the routine, the first session is just talking, getting to know them. Okay, you woke up today, did you eat breakfast, did you drink water, how much, just to see how their daily routine is. Right. And then from there, well, your goal, you're trying to gain, you're trying to lose, okay? You're trying to gain, and I can see your routine of eating isn't the optimal for that, we're gonna have to change that. Yes. You can just tell you're not reading your requirements by looking at your body. Right. Now. Exercise wise, that's where it becomes a little trickier because like you were mentioning, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. So you can, there's a little bit of a trial and error that you have to kind of go in and push people. When I have someone, I challenge them with a heavy weight, moderate weight, like this, like that. It might not work for the first week, okay, then I change it. Yeah. These are little tweaks here and there because it's, it's, a, it's a customized. It's not a one, one size fits all. Everybody is different. Totally, you can't give everybody, then doctor can't give everybody the same medicine. Yeah, and people have different body structures. Yeah. Some people have longer legs, some people have longer torsos, longer arms, right. and so they sometimes they shy away from certain exercises or certain movements, which mm -hmm. would be beneficial to them because they think they can't completely do it or do it the right way or with the full range, but sometimes it just takes a little modification. Place a weight here, lift the leg this, or do this, and it'll allow you to put your body in that position where it allows it to optimally load the muscle up with the proper stress. Well, there's also uh, the exercise you can substitute in if you need to. Yes, correct, correct. Um, there's always another movement. That... I know that right now I'm limited on what I can do because of my hip and my leg, and so getting up and down is difficult. And so I'm better off going into machines and using machines and trying to grab a dumbbell and walk across the room because I can't do it. But when I get well, I will. <laughs> but there are people that um, prefer dumbbells, which I think great great gains with yes and there's people that prefer machines and there's people that prefer the bands now what are your what's your view on the bands bands i love because bands are great to warm up not necessarily just the muscle but your your joints your tendons you get those those small fibers firing off in ways that you might not be able to specifically with a dumbbell or a machine now I don't strictly just focus with bands and focus with dumbbells. I feel you have to have a healthy blend of all three. Yeah. You know, um, what I love using is I'll put the bands and I'll wrap the weights on the machine and make that resistance a little different. So now I'm having the resistance band added with the weight machine. I've seen people do that and I was going to ask you about that. Um, how does that actually work? Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, I love it. I feel I'm able to challenge more. Uh, of the target muscle and negate the secondary muscles. For example, in a pull down, I would come and I would wrap the band around the weight stack. It allows me to put the weight, let's say at 100 pounds, and with the band plus another 100 pounds, it gives me 200 pounds full at the bottom, which would be the top contraction. Right. Where it's negating now, I don't have to pull 200 pounds at oh. the initial with my arms. So oh, my what? biceps doesn't have, my arms are doing uh -huh. less work and I get the full challenge onto my back at the end of the movement. And it, and it wants to pull it, so you have to be in control. You can't just jerk the weight. You have to pull and control and let it nice and smooth or else it's just gonna jerk you back up. That's interesting because um, the Nautilus machine was, was kind of like that. It had uh, a Great cable machines. that went around two pulleys and the pulleys were shaped like kidneys. Mm -hmm. And so as you would pull, it had a consistent weight all the way from beginning till end. You didn't pull all of a sudden it got easy. You know, it just is how it worked. 
I think that's a good idea. I mean, you do curls on a curl bench and you're pulling and all of a sudden you get it a certain way, it becomes easy. Yep. If you have a band tied to your barbell as you pull, you're going to have contraction all the way up. All the way, and, and it, it, it's a continuous stress for the muscle. And that's where you're going to be getting your, your optimal results, challenging and stressing that muscle out. What do you think about negatives? I love those too. Love them, love them. Uh, because it doesn't require it to have, one, if you don't have a lot of equipment or a lot of weight, you don't need a lot. You can challenge the muscle without having to have multiple drop sets or things like that. You can really fatigue the muscle out. And I personally feel it helps me develop more of that mind-muscle connection. Because I really have to slow down and make sure I'm engaging the muscles and controlling because yes. you're coming down slow, not going up fast. There's some exercise you can do negatives on. There's others that is really hard. Mm -hmm. All right, if you're going to do curls, negatives work fine. If you're going to do triceps, negatives work fine. If you're going to do a bench press, it's difficult. It is. Because you can't let it down slow if you've got two or 300 pounds on there. No. And it's, you're defeating your purpose. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to do them on a bench press. Uh, you know, there's other things like standing laterals, but you only can use like five pounds. Yeah. Because going up and coming down, the resistance is both ways. It's pretty damn hard. Very. Um, but, you know, with what we do and how we train, and I've been doing this for years, and people ask me, what did you do back in the 70s? And it's all over my shows that we did and how we trained. It was nothing complicated at all. It was basics. Everything goes back to basics. Mm -hmm. uh, basic powerlifting got me going. So once I got into powerlifting, I got into bodybuilding. I figured well, I can build my strength and size and I can make shapely muscle. So you added a bench press, you added dumbbell flies, you added curls, you added triceps, and you had a workout. Mm -hmm. So uh, today, um, I see these crazy exercises <laughs> that trainers are doing uh, over goals, actually. And I wonder, and I see these people year after year for like 15 years, and they never make any progress. I'm sad to say. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the reasons is, and I think you do this, which is good, you follow up with them and see if they're eating right and what they're doing, their homework. Yeah. Because what you do in the gym with them is one thing. That's important. Yeah. But what they do at home behind your back is another. It's like having a woman that cheats on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and I tell my clients, you know, you come in and you see me for one hour a day. Yeah. But you still have 23 hours left in the there day. There you go. So 23 hours outweigh that one hour. And it's very important how you, you treat your body, not only in the gym, but out of it. Putting, make sure you're taking in the right foods. Yes. Making sure sleep is very, very... Sleep uh, is detrimental. I mean, you've got to have it. And yes. do you sleep well? Uh, thankfully, I'm able to, to sleep well. I try to get anywhere between eight to nine hours a night. Okay. And it's, I mean, that's where, that's where the magic happens. That's where your body's able to right. take itself and see what needs to be That's true. It. And when I'm out, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I got to get up to pee, but I mean, that's because of my, my kidney right now, but now you go right back to sleep. Yeah. Instantly. And then I have all these crazy ass dreams. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's because your body uh, needs it. It's, it's healing. It's, it's changing. Right. Uh, when you're working out, it's, it's tired. It wants to rest so it can focus on itself to heal itself. Now, I have friends that tell me they can't fall asleep. They're up till 3 o'clock in the morning or they'll get up at 3 and they, have, they can't sleep. I, I don't know exactly why. I've tried to talk to them about it and I don't seem to get anywhere because I don't know what's wrong. Mm -hmm. But um, my sleep starts, <laughs> I hate to say this, around 10 at night in front of the television. Okay. You know, off and on and off and on. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon around 11 o'clock, I look at my cat. I said, let's go to bed. <laughs> so then I get up and I go to bed and I put the night show on and I intend to watch it. And I get about 10 minutes into it and I'm out and I wake up at 2 o'clock and turn the TV off. But it puts me out. It puts you out. Yeah. You have your routine. Yeah. I, you know, I feel sometimes people don't realize that how they eat as well affects their sleeping pattern. If you're going out in the night with your friends and you're having some drinks or you're just hanging out, there's going to be some, probably just going to grab a bite to eat before or in the middle of the being out. That energy, that food source, keeps your body going. Yeah, well, you it does. eating later in the evening tells your body, "Well, we're not going to sleep. Let's let's keep going. We're it's doing true. something." So your digestive system stays on work. Your mind subconsciously is still working to work through that. So I feel people tend to have a habit of eating a little later in the evenings. Yeah. So thus, their body tends tends to go into cool down mode later. I see. So I personally stop eating about. 6 30 7 7 30 so do i and then by the time 9 9 30 10 comes around i'm exhausted i'm wanting to go to bed my body just feels like 
you know, uh, around two in the morning, I'm like totally hungry. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's, and it's, and it's not bad. You wake up, you get your little glass of water, or you get like a, a little something to fill you in and you go back to bed, but you're not putting these big heavy meals or these, no. these substantial no, I just, stuff in No, I keep ice water by the bed. Perfect. Or cranberry juice. <laughs> but um, ever since my kidney made a rebound and came back, uh, I was having trouble sleeping. I get the shakes and I get chills and my body would jerk and uh, I wasn't doing good at all. But now that it's normal, I don't have any of that. That's but what I do have is hunger. And so they doubled my thyroid. By doubling my thyroid, it makes me even more hungry. <laughs> so you <laughs> can kind of, you know, oh my God, just burn up stuff like right and left. No, but sleep is, that's that's the key to growing. That's the key to having a, a good body. That's, yep. Uh, Eric, the way he put it to me, the analogy was... Uh, you got yourself a batch of cookie dough, mm -hmm. and sleep is the oven. That's where you cook your cookies. That's where where the change happens. So without... basically, basically eat the dough before you go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Don't cook it, just eat it. <laughs> yeah, I love that shit. Um, so, what's your plans for the future to keep on training people? Uh, I do because I love helping people get that aha moment where they realize exercising isn't as bad as they think it is. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of people who, who kind of fight it and who have told me, oh, I've never liked exercising or I've never been the type to yeah. do this and do this. And, and you show them that it's not overly complicated. Like they, they sometimes it's the not knowing. The, the It's basically four letters, fear. Yes. Yes, the fear. I got to go to the gym with all those big people and I got to work out. <laughs> oh my God, I'm scared to death. Yeah. And and yeah, so you get that. I, I love helping the people realize that, that and then that initial can set that initial spark can set off a, a flame that can just make them all of a sudden change their whole lifestyle. That's wonderful. You know where it makes them. You know, I'm not saying you completely have to be uh, a, a, a gym nut. You know, and you're going every day no, and no, you're doing this, but no. where you're just a little more self conscious of what you're eating. If you become a gym nut like us, <laughs> you sometimes burn out. Yes, I've never burned out, but most people would have by mm -hmm. now, especially through injuries. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because injuries, they, they set your progress back. You feel like you're not getting anywhere. That's how I feel right now. And it's so just... it, it makes you not want to keep pushing. But it's those small steps. Small steps make a foot. A <laughs> foot make an, a I'm mile. taking small steps. I, <laughs> you people don't realize what I've been going through. And Joseph knows uh, I have a little slight infection in my knee that's worked its way up to my hip joint when I fell. So for me to walk, I have to use a walker and I have to shuffle one foot at a time just to get out the door of my house, right? Yep. It ain't easy. It's not, but you're doing it. Yeah, and but I'm doing it. The thing is keeping yourself in motion. Right. Because once you, you I feel you stop that momentum, uh, it's like the, the snowball on the top of the hill. You get that snowball going, eventually that snowball is gonna go yeah. on its own. So what I'm trying to say is I, at my age, if I can go through this and, and still push myself through it, then any of you guys can do it too. Even if you have a cold or you have a sore muscle or a joint hurts, just push yourself through it. You can yep. get it done. There's always ways around. Where can people reach you if they want to contact you? Um, you can reach me through my Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is Joseph the Trainer. You can shoot me a question. Uh, I'll answer back anytime. Uh, also on Facebook, my Joseph Orellana or Joseph the Trainer. You can find me through Eric the Trainer's profile. I'm on there with him. Um, and yeah, shoot me a question if if you know you want to see a particular exercise or you have something I can respond back or I'll make a video. Of, explaining the exercise or, or something like that if you have any questions um, but yeah I'm on there so you can shoot me a message cool. anytime well thank you Joseph I really appreciate your help with me you've helped me a lot in coming on the show and talking about what you do and you guys stay tuned for more be sure and look him up if you need to share men or women doesn't matter and uh, stay tuned for more shows because I'm going to start doing more and more now that this virus is I don't know, we don't know where it is but we can still go on the air with stuff see you next time thank you guys see you next time Hope you enjoyed the video brought to you by Old School Labs. Use my discount code DRAYSON12 on the link below at OldSchoolLabs.com. Hey everyone, now you can have the Gold's Gym logo drawn by me, the artist Rick Drayson. Personalized and made out to you and signed by me to frame and put on your gym wall or wherever you see fit to do so. It's a piece of bodybuilding history. It will never be duplicated again. It's the largest selling icon t-shirt logo in the world. And I'm the guy that drew it. And I will draw it for you. Just go to my website, rickdrayson.com and order there. You can pay through PayPal and it will be sent out right away. And be sure to watch Rick's Corner 
for all the videos on bodybuilding, nutrition, fitness, pro wrestling, and anything that suits your interests as far as getting physically fit and being the best you can be from the golden era of bodybuilding. Baby, see you next time.